Joining us now by telephone is Catherine Baker. She's University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy Dean. And here with us in New York is Jeff Smidsroot. He is healthcare.com co-founder and Pivot Health founder and CEO, which helps consumers find healthcare plans. So Dean Baker, first let's start with you. Give us the lay of the land when it comes to insurance. How many people are under private insurance? How many people rely on Medicare and Medicaid? And how has that changed over the last few years? Uh, the vast majority of people who have private insurance have insurance through their employers. There's a small but growing non-group market where people get insurance on their own through health insurance exchanges or through individual plans that they find through brokers. On the public side, most people with public insurance are on Medicare, that's for people over age 65, or on Medicaid for the disabled or some people who are both over age, uh, for the poor, for the disabled, for people who are over age 65 and in one of those categories. Most of the public health care dollars are for people on Medicare. So talking about that, as you said, small but growing, somewhat growing group of private uh, insurance uh, uh, recipients, uh, how much of that is because of the Affordable Care Act, and have the Republican attempts to really curtail that made a difference in the growth pattern? The growth of that non-group health insurance exchange private insurance market is almost all attributable to Obamacare or the ACA, and most of that is because of the subsidy. The people who are buying insurance on the non-group market are doing so because they get government dollars to help them buy the insurance. Without those subsidies, most probably wouldn't be able to afford it. Uh, and is the Trump administration cutting back on those subsidies or eliminating them? Can they without passing it through Congress? Some of the subsidies go directly to individuals, and Congress would have to act to change those, but there's some implicit subsidies by taking away the highest risk enrollees, by reinsuring the insurers. The government, in essence, lowers the premium that people have to pay because it's taking some of the risk away from the insurers, and those risk adjustment payments are what's the subject of a lot of court debate these days. So, Jeff, walk this down to the company level. Taking in that macro view of where we are in healthcare, what does that mean? if you're a healthcare company? Well, it means uh, for consumers, it, it, it means that for those who are eligible for premium tax credits or subsidies, uh, health insurance is relatively affordable. But for the 8 to 10 million who are not eligible for subsidies, uh, they're finding ACA, Obamacare plans increasingly unaffordable, and that's opening up a market for companies that uh, allow alternative plans, alternate plans, short-term medical plans, other types of solutions. So talk more about those kind of opportunities and, and how you, is it going to be startups? Is it going to be a section in a big insurer, for example, that's going to put some money into this new kind of business? Well, you, is it M&A? You, you, you're, you're going to see with, with healthcare.com, we help consumers shop, we help them compare prices, we help them find alternative plans. And you're seeing a lot of new companies coming into that space, uh, companies like an Oscar or a Bright Health with new ways of thinking about how to uh, help consumers. You know, we have to remember we're, we're living in a gig economy. And what is so very wrong about the notion of gig insurance, insurance that you tailor yourself and you take with you? And new companies are coming up creating those types of solutions. So, K Catherine, uh, one of the things that Jeff is doing is trying to sort this out or help people sort it out for themselves. Why is this so fiendishly complicated? Because you read reports about the difference, the different kinds of plans, but also the different costs of plans across the country. Why isn't there more uniformity across the country when it comes to the cost of health insurance? innovative health insurance plans is just as important as having innovative health care. We think about all of the new medicines that are available to people and all of the new treatments. We also need creative ways to design health insurance plans that foster really high value health care and stem the use of expensive care that's not improving health all that much. So you're going to get insurance plans that have different copayment structures or different types of services covered and it's complicated to choose among those but the competition of having lots of different options available is what's going to drive prices down and what's going to drive innovation and delivery. So I think having a more rich insurance market of things to choose from, but then having someone help you find the product that's right for you and letting you choose the insurer that's giving you the highest bang for your buck in terms of your health insurance premiums delivering health improvements would make the system function a lot better. And you both are talking from a consumer point of view, but also we had a graphic that showed that the employer cost is actually increasing, causing employers to take different kind of steps in the health insurance world. Uh, what might those be? 
Well, the employers are looking at creating more rewards for consumers, wellness, different types of things to, to bring down uh, the overall systemic cost of health care. You're also seeing a little known bipartisan effort of Congress a few years ago created something called QSERA, which is qualified small employer HRAs that allow very small employers more creativity and flexibility in creating unique plans and mix and match plans for, for their business uh, employees. So you're seeing a lot of movement and I think movement and chaos is a good thing. Uh, a monolithic one size fits all didn't really fit anybody very well and I think over the next few years you're going to see more new companies coming up creating these types of flexible alternatives. Thank you both so very much. University of Chicago's Catherine Baker and Jeff Sm Smedzrud. I got that? Smedzrud. Yes Smedzrud. you did. I got it. All right. Uh, and healthcare.com co-founder. Thank you very Thank much. You.